you. Look at me. So good to see you, Ray. Thank you for being here. How do you feel to be, you know, out of the house here in a studio? Do you feel good? This is great. This is this is fantastic. I drove all the way down here just to be with you and to have this live experience. That Zoom talk shows, it's a comedy killer. Thanks. Yeah. 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 You probably noticed that. No, we're... All we're, the interruptions. We're having the a right great time. No, sorry, you Say, go. No, 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 I'm... Yeah, no. No, so, so I was I'm just down. saying... Let... <laughs> now, we are so happy that you're here, Ray. We really are. You've just got back yeah. from an epic road trip. Here you are here. Look at you. Looking like the king of RVs. How was this? Is this as much fun as people say it is? Talk to me. How was the trip? It was fantastic. Yeah, I took my wife and my 16-year-old son. We went to the Grand Canyon. We went to Utah. And we actually delivered 500 pounds of food to the Navajo Nation. Wow. They've been hit really hard with COVID. That's and incredible. Uh, got to try. I saw Nomadland. Yes. And I was inspired. And uh, I wanted to see the real America and not be like some elite Hollywood douchebag. I probably can't say that word, can I? Douchebag? Uh, yeah. I think you can. OK. And, I, you know, flying to, like, the, the Four Seasons in Maui. You know, I wanted to really experience it. We stayed in a Walmart parking lot. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had a fantastic time. But do you have to... Here's my question. Do you have to do, like, training and stuff before you drive one? I think I'd be scared to drive one of these. There's a lot... They give you, like, a tour in, like, three minutes. And, like, right. here's a this, and you plug the thing, and you do the thing, and here's the awning, and the blah, blah, blah. But I am the RV king at this point. Well, you took this photo. Look at this. You went to the Grand Canyon, yes. as you said, mm -hmm. and which I can only imagine is so beautiful and extraordinary. But talk to me about this warning sign that's next to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> this is literally the first thing we saw when we got out of our RV at the Grand Canyon. And apparently, it is so beautiful that you fall down on your knees and vomit. <laughs> so, warning. <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually because so many dumb tourists go and don't realize that they're in the middle of the desert. Yes. That they're climbing, they're at 5,000 feet, and, uh, and it's an incredibly steep climb, and they get heat stroke and they start vomiting. You know, it's like in, in Everest, when you, they mark their way up the route up to the top of the mountain um, by the dead bodies on right. the side of the trail. It's the same way the Grand Canyon, only with piles of vomit. Just piles of vomit <laughs> everywhere. Yes, as you go, yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a great trip. Is this something that you would, would you do an RV trip again? I will never do this again in the, for the rest of my life. It was horrible. <laughs> it, was, it was the worst. First of all, I'm the worst RV driver of all time. Right. Um, we had like a $1,500 depo deposit, which we lost. They're still tabulating the additional damages. No. True story that we did to the RV. The, bu the bumper was dragging. The toilet was broken. The windshield was cracked. Um, uh, we broke the toilet. So wow. It was, it was always gape. It was like a gaping maw of a toilet. It was, it was terrible. By the way, do you know the difference between uh, gray water and black water? I do not. I'll tell you uh, at the commercial break. <laughs> but. Um, it's also so loud in the RV. They don't tell you this. I'm like driving along. I'm like, honey, can I have a sandwich? She's like, what? Honey, can you make me a sandwich? Because it's just roaring as you're going down the freeway, rattling. Right. Um, I should have flown to Maui and stayed at the Four Seasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, like a Hollywood elite yeah. douchebag. Exactly. Yeah, I, that, I think that's why I haven't done it. Yeah? I feel, like, I feel like me, my wife, and our three kids would get to the end of the road. Yeah before somebody has said the phrase, right, that's it. <laughs> and I don't know what's happened, but someone will say that. Uh, but I got to have two essential American experiences, which was visiting the Grand Canyon, yep. must do, and sleeping in a Walmart parking lot. So, Which I have done, actually. You have? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Long now, story. <laughs> we had Bear Grylls on the show last week, yeah. and you did his show, yeah. Running Wild, this season. How, here's my question. Why? <laughs> you know, I'm asking myself the same question, because I was on the show, and I kept saying to Bear, like, I thought this was going to be, like, celebrity hard. Yes. This is, like, it's really hard. Yes. I was climbing cliffs, and I was spelunking, and uh, I was Sorry, eating... what? Long story. <laughs> I was eating fish eyeballs. I mean, it was 
when the producers first talked to me, they were like, is there anything you won't do? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to skydive. Let's, I draw the line at skydiving. I don't like heights. I don't want to ride in a helicopter. And like, well, you kind of got to ride in the helicopter. That's how bear comes and goes. It's going to be fine. So the first helicopter, they put a hook in me. And bear's like, oh, hello, hello, mate. Here we go. Oh, it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be so good. And then we're on the, the skids outside the helicopter, no. and it takes off. Oh, no, stop. Yeah, and we're going like 50 miles an hour, 100 feet over the trees, but then it gets worse. So we finished this whole godforsaken adventure, and um, the helicopter's coming back. I'm like, okay, I've been through, I've eaten fish eyeballs, I've spelunked, they can now. Sorry, what? I'll explain at the break. Okay. We, um, the helicopter comes, and he, they put a cable down 30 feet under the helicopter, and the helicopter takes off. And I was gonna say no, but Bear is so charming. He's like, oh, you're a champion. You're a legend. You're crushing it, mate. Come on, this is wonderful. And any, I will do anything if anyone calls me a legend or a right. champion. Yeah. Well, I think that's his whole thing. I think that's how he gets you to do stuff. Yeah. He says things like, you'll be brilliant. And yeah. what he means is, you'll make brilliant TV, and they are not the same thing. <laughs> I, I think I think that's right. Yeah, because um, I I would I would swim with sharks if someone was like, "You're a legend. You're brilliant. You're crushing it." I'd be like, "Okay, let's go." go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about your new podcast, Dark Air, with Terry Carnation. It debuted this month to great acclaim. Who is Terry Carnation, and, and what can we expect from this series? Terry Carnation is a character that I've created who is near and dear to my heart, kind of my alter ego. He has a late night AM. A uh, paranormal call in talk show host. Right. So um, he's suffered a, a kind of a nervous breakdown. He's coming, making his return to the radio airwaves in this fictional scripted podcast. And we also have improvised calls with all kinds of great actors. You know, the, half the cast of The Office is in it Thomas Lennon, uh, Sam Neill, calling in and improvising calls with people and their paranormal, supernatural questions. So 